There are 64 critical technologies that will control the future of the world. And incredibly, China now controls 90% of them. But it wasn't always like this. In fact, 20 years ago, it was the United States who controlled 60 of the 64 technologies. But over the past decade, China has overpowered the US and now firmly sits in the driver's seat to lead the future of our world. This new information was published in a new report entitled Critical Technology Tracker, The Rewards of Long-Term Research Investment. It was written by Aspie, an Australian think tank who ironically receives funding from the US State Department and Military Industrial Complex. In other words, this organization is anything but pro-China. Everyone knows China has been the world's factory for the past four decades, but in recent years, China has shifted from being a manufacturing powerhouse to a research powerhouse and now dominates advanced fields like AI, renewable energy, biotech, space, and quantum computing. The Economist even admitted earlier this year that China is now a scientific superpower. Ten years ago, Harvard Business Review published a research paper claiming that China isn't able to innovate, announcing China is full of uncreative, rule-bound learners who won't be able to contribute to innovation. But fast forward a decade, and China now produces five times the amount of high-impact research than the United States. While the U.S. government has been funding wars and regime changes across the globe, China has been quietly working behind the scenes and leapfrogged the United States as a result of meticulous long-term planning. Incredibly, Harvard Business Review, the same journal that doubted China 10 years ago, just released a new article highlighting the four key factors that have led to China's meteoric rise. Today, we're going to break down the four major keys to China's economic dominance and reveal to you how China surpassed the West to become the world leader in tech. Trust me, in today's video, I'm going to reveal to you the real truth about China. But before I do, I want to share with you a piece of technology that has changed my life and helped me improve the most important thing to me, and that is my health. This is Lumen, a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. Simply breathe into this and Lumen's app will tell you if you are burning fat or carbs and then give you a customized plan to improve your nutrition, workouts, sleep, and even stress management. I just turned 40 and I'm now investing in the best products that can improve the quality of my life. Your metabolism is your body's engine and learning to manage it will help you improve your health. Simply breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning and it will tell you if you are burning mostly fat or carbs. Then Lumen will give you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. You can also breathe into Lumen before and after workouts and meals so you know what's going on in your body in real time. I've been going to the gym four times a week and with the help of Lumen, I managed to drop 16.2 pounds in the past two months. I feel better and more energized, but honestly, finally have a better understanding of how my body works and what proper nutrition means for me. So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me slash Cyrus15 to get 15% off your Lumen. That is L-U-M-E-N dot M-E slash Cyrus15 for 15% off your purchase. Thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring today's episode. And now let's reveal the four secrets to China's historic rise in tech. Number one, the innovation ecosystem. The first major key to China's success is its innovation ecosystem, which uniquely combines top-down government support with the bottom-up drive of Chinese entrepreneurs. This is in large part due to China operating at a trade surplus of a whopping $823 billion in 2023. This means the country as a whole exports far more goods than it imports, and they can use the excess revenues to develop critical industries. The Chinese government picks key growth industries of the future and supercharges them through favorable policies, regulations, and centralized investment in scientific research. Contrast this with the United States, where industry growth is much more dependent on shareholder value and short-term gains. Firms in the US may recognize that certain industries are the future, yet are much slower to invest in them as they are focused on maximizing profits in the immediate future and are much less willing to invest long term. The United States government also plays a much lesser role. When the US government does choose to invest in these industries, investment is always subject to change with different parties and budgets. In an almost exact opposite position to China, the US trade deficit in 2023 set at $773 billion, meaning the US imports much more than it exports. As a result, any government funding must be raised by printing money from the Federal Reserve, adding to the US national debt of over $30 trillion and pushing the world further towards de-dollarization. The approach towards innovation, which China calls the whole of nation, lets China marshal almost unlimited state resources. From 1995 to 2021, China's total R&D outlay 
soared from 18.2 billion to 620.1 billion, a 3,299% increase compared to America's 277% increase. In recent years, US profits and government stimulus have often gone into stock buybacks and executive salaries. US firms have become greedy and complacent, and research and development have become an afterthought. Meanwhile, China has become a leading global hub for advanced scientific research. Chinese scientists now lead the world in producing high-impact papers and contributing to famous scientific publications selected after rigorous peer review. No segment better illustrates China's technological prowess than clean tech. China now accounts for over 80% of global production capacity in 11 essential clean energy technologies and dominates the rare earth supply chain accounting for 70% of global rare earth ore extraction and 90% of rare earth ore processing. In the solar sector, there's virtually no point in Western companies trying to compete. China's investment in large-scale solar panel manufacturing over the past two decades drove down prices by 85% between 2010 and 2020, leading to exponential global growth and significant climate benefits. After China opened up its economy in the 1970s, many Western companies moved in to take advantage of the massive market and cheap labor. In exchange for access to the market, Chinese companies benefited from decades of Western investments in traditional industries like cars and chemicals. This willing transaction of expertise for markets is the source of the stereotype that China steals technologies. Ironically, it is now the West asking Chinese companies to come to their countries and share their expertise in critical technologies like clean energy. One of the largest U.S. renewable energy developers, Inva Energy, has seized this opportunity to benefit from China's investment in solar. This year, the company opened the biggest solar factory in America in a 51-49 partnership with leading Chinese solar company Longyi. As part of the deal, Inva Energy acquired Longyi's advanced solar technology, and the Ohio facility is expected to eventually produce 5 gigawatts of solar panels annually and create more than a thousand new American jobs. If the U.S. is going to stay committed and meet its climate change goals, the only way for them to achieve this is by partnering with Chinese companies. Ford is another U.S. company that has recognized that Chinese technology is indispensable to its green ambitions. Ford recently announced a joint venture with CATL, China's dominant EV battery manufacturer. Ford is investing $3.5 billion into a new EV battery factory in Michigan that will use licensed CATL technology to cost-effectively produce the lithium-ion batteries needed for Ford's F-150 Lightning trucks and other EVs. For all the talk about how China is the world's largest polluter, the country is undeniably the largest single player in the green energy transition. Not only for China's transition, but for the entire world. Essentially, without China, becoming a carbon-neutral planet would be impossible. Point number two, investment in the global south. Western countries have historically targeted their products for exports to only other high-income countries, and they've often overlooked the small developing countries around the world. But China knows what it's like to be a poor developing country and sees these smaller countries around the world as China's biggest opportunity. After all, 6.8 billion people live in the global south. That's over 85% of the world's population. And as these populations grow, so will their demand for goods and new technologies. China's Belt and Road Initiative has built ports, railroads, airports to help facilitate the global southern increase for demand of goods. China's BRI has invested over $1 trillion in over 150 countries around the globe. And unsurprisingly, these initiatives not only ease trade, but make China a much more appealing partner than the West. Chinese smartphone companies have captured 76% of the smartphone market in India and more than 60% of the African market. The telecommunications company Huawei alone supplies 70% of the 4G network for the entire continent continent of Africa, while Chinese EVs consumption is skyrocketing in the global south. In Latin America, Chinese companies hold a massive 86% market share of EVs and 40% of all total car sales. So what would the global south look like today without China? Basically, there would have been zero changes. Western-funded infrastructure projects in these countries are virtually non-existent, and the rise and development of these emerging markets would have been delayed by decades. Once again, without China, smaller countries across the globe would have had no chance to enter and compete in the global economy that now comprises our world. Number three, 
ultra competitive markets. Now, this might come as a surprise to many Westerners who think that China's government controls every aspect of the country, but there is a healthy competitive local market that actually drives innovation throughout China. China's domestic market is often described as a gladiator's arena. Those who become victorious in this cutthroat domestic market are extremely formidable and able to dominate when moving on to the world market. Some of these victors you may well have heard of, like BYD or Huawei. Once Beijing decides an industry will be of significant importance, regional governments scramble to offer subsidies and other support programs. Hundreds of companies jump in, but the majority of them will fail. But those that survive will be ready to dominate their respective industry on the world stage. Tesla is actually a great case study to examine. Entering the Chinese market in 2014, Tesla was able to gain a major market share. This market entrance coincided with Beijing's decision to prioritize the development of the country's own EV industry, and the race was on. Local manufacturers like NIO, Xiaopeng, and BYD began producing high-quality EVs at competitive prices, challenging Tesla's market position. Within six years, 500 Chinese EV companies sprouted up, yet after fierce competition, only 100 remained in 2023. Of these, BYD surpassed Tesla as the world's largest EV manufacturer in total number of cars sold in 2023. Tesla could no longer price its cars at a premium and began to lose market share, with newer Chinese EVs becoming too advanced and affordable. Tesla responded to the rapidly growing competition by cutting the price of its signature Model Y four times in 2023 alone. Fast forward to today, and China's booming EV industry has now become so popular that it is an existential threat to the foreign automakers in China. 15 years ago, Chinese consumers stood in line to pay cash for the privilege of owning a Buick, BMW, Audi, or Mercedes. But today, most Chinese consumers have embraced the switch to EV cars and instead are now embracing their local brands instead. Chinese companies have now offered a lifeline to German automakers by sharing their expertise to help these German firms in the transition to EVs. Audi and FAW are working together on a $4.87 billion EV production facility in Changchun, and BMW is investing $2.76 billion to upgrade its Xianyang plant for EV production starting in 2026. German automakers were the ones that first taught the Chinese how to build combustion engine style cars, but now German engineers are learning from Chinese EV makers, reversing the teacher-student relationship. Foreign auto brands are desperate to regain their footing as their ability to adapt to China's market is not just essential to their company's survival, but arguably to Germany's economic survival as well. Number four, 1.4 billion consumers. This is actually a very interesting point to observe because for many companies, expansion overseas is a necessity in order to drive enough revenue growth to survive. But Chinese firms could easily focus on their domestic market alone and still become one of the largest companies in the world. The market is literally that big. If these Chinese companies eventually want to venture outside the domestic market, they come out of the gate ready to dominate as they already have scaled their business to a point where they can serve 1.4 billion potential customers. This massive market doesn't just help domestic companies thrive, but ensures that foreign companies will do everything they can to access the Chinese market. China's middle class alone has a population of 700 million tech-savvy people with disposable income. Despite all the talk about companies de-risking and decoupling from China, the country still offers a market of unmatched scale with sophisticated consumers. Investment into the country and continued business with China is almost a guarantee as ignoring the market means missing out on a major source of potential revenue. China is expected to grow to as much as 40% of the global luxury spending by 2030. From cars to luxury items, many Western companies would collapse without the significant revenues they receive from the Chinese market. Using these four major keys to success, China has been able to dominate the vast majority of critical technologies and create the strongest industrial base in the world. Not only have they used them for their own advantage, but for the future of our world. Now that China dominates 90% of the world's most important tech industries, it's time that we in the West ramp down tensions and participate in China's win-win partnerships. Because one of my favorite quotes that I've said many times is when the United States and China learn to win, the entire world will too. Everyone, thank you so much for spending time with me here on YouTube. And again, thank you to Lumen for sponsoring today's episode. I love this amazing tech. And if it can improve my health and help me live a better life, I'm all in. Remember, you can save 15% off by simply going to lumen.me slash Cyrus15 to get 15% off your Lumen device today. Thank you all for your incredible support. And I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.